What is up, film geeks? My name is Trevor, and welcome to my channel. Yesterday, I gave you guys my top 10 most disappointing movies list, and today I'm sharing with you my top 10 most surprising movies list. Not movies that I necessarily love or are the best of the year, they're just movies I went in not expecting much, and they surprised me. Hence, this list. Very excited to get into it. Come back tomorrow on New Year's Eve day for the top 10 worst and top 10 best list. Both coming out tomorrow. I'm excited for all of it, but right now, I'm giving you guys the 10 movies that surprised me the most this year. Let's do this. Right at number 10, Joe Carner hand movie with Frank Grillo. I think of a Groundhog Day movie, but a lot of action and a lot of fun in boss level. Frank Grillo is the main man here and he is this guy who keeps living the day over and over. No matter how he cuts it or how he tries to change the day, he always ends up being killed by everyone after him. So you have to go on this journey with him to figure out where he has to go and what he has to do to get out of this loop. It's so much fun. It is something we've kind of seen before but Joe Carnahan and Frank Grillo have been working 10 plus years on this movie and I had so much fun. You can just feel the passion behind it and it's just a fun schlock fest action packed movie with Frank Grillo being your lead man I absolutely love Frank Grillo he's one of my favorite at working actors today boss level it is on Hulu cannot recommend this movie enough going on to number eight this movie kind of really went under the radar this year it's on HBO Max it's directed by Steven Soderbergh no sudden move with a fantastic cast from Don Cheadle Benicio Del Toro David Harbour Matt Damon Noah Jupe the list goes on from there but it's a crime thriller drama movie with so many different moving parts and you really got to be paying attention as to where everything's going to go because you can get lost and it can be a little bit confusing by the end of the movie it does wrap up really nicely and this one really kept me invested kept me on the edge of my seat and I really had hadn't heard about it besides this awesome cast and after I got done watching it a certain things that might have been done differently would have made this in my top 10 of the year but I still really enjoyed it I thought it was a fantastic movie no sudden move if you guys haven't seen it it is on HBO Max directed by Steven Soderbergh from Logan Lucky the Ocean movies I absolutely love them no sudden move is under the radar definitely a big surprise for the year moving on to number eight Kevin Hart's fatherhood this movie came on out on Netflix over summer and I did not expect to feel the amount of motion I did when watching a Kevin Hart movie I normally watch Kevin Hart movies to laugh and feel good and feel jolly but this one really hits deep on the emotional levels showing Kevin Hart's range as an actor and it really does pack a punch on like loss and grief and it does have those humorous moments in there but it really shows how Kevin Hart has to go on without his partner to raise his daughter it's an emotional movie I did not expect to feel as much emotion when watching a Kevin Hart movie father Hood on Netflix had me in tears all summer long. Let's talk about one of the craziest movies I've ever seen with the lead character who doesn't even have one line. Willy's Wonderland. I had so much fun with this and the creator Geo Parsons was such a cool guy on social media like oh you're on staff and if you haven't heard about this movie well starring Nicolas Cage need I say more it's this guy who gets his tire flat and the, the shop will do it for free if he cleans Willy's Wonderland which is essentially Chuck E. Cheese but essentially Nicolas Cage is supposed to be sacrificed to these machines and it becomes this crazy bloodbath with Nicolas Cage fighting all these animatronic robot things. It's kind of freaky, it's very gory, but Nicolas Cage doesn't even have one line and it's that much fun. I absolutely loved Willy's Wonderland. It made the surprise list because I literally was like, this movie sounds crazy, scary, and weird, and it was all that and much more. Willy's Wonderland was a ton of fun. At number six going to be The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Arguably my favorite animated movie of the year, but just so much heart and passion and love is in this movie. And I love the animation style. It's from the creators of Spider-Verse. They didn't direct it, but they produced it. And I know this is a lot of people's favorite animated movie of the year, and it might be mine. The Mitchells vs. Machines just had so much passion and energy and creativity behind it. That when I was watching, I couldn't stop laughing and smiling and just had so much fun with the Mitchells versus the Machine. Breaking us into the top five, Tom Holland had a great year of movies, if you ask me, from Spider-Man No Way Home to Chaos Walking. The reason this made a surprise list, I'm not necessarily saying this is a great movie, I definitely have problems with it, but I went in expecting this is gonna be the worst movie of the year, and I actually really did enjoy it. When you go into a movie expecting it to be bad, generally, you are surprised, and it ends up being good, which is exactly what happened here. It is a movie that I have quite a bit of problems with in certain ways it's filmed, so there's certain things about it that I'm not a fan of, but again, I wasn't expecting this to be the worst movie just because it got delayed so many times. It was in production hell for so many years. I was like, Chaos Walking's not gonna be any good, and it was pretty good. I liked it quite a bit. Moving on to number four. There's another Tom Holland movie. I absolutely love this movie. It almost made my top 10 list. The Russo Brothers and Tom Holland, Cherry. It was awesome to see the Russo Brothers come out and do something outside the MCU. 
And I, well, I don't think they 100% nailed this. I thought they did a very good job. It basically tells three stories over the course of the movie, like him being a, a student and like falling in love, then him going to the military, which is my favorite part of the movie. And then it shows him become a drug addict and dealing with PTSD. And it actually becomes dark and gruesome. And it just really hits hard on a lot of emotional levels for me. And Cherry delivered on everything I wanted to. It came on Apple TV+. Plus. I watched it from the comfort of my home. And I was just glued to the screen. I thought the Rooster Brothers did a fantastic job with this. And Tom Holland gives arguably his career best performance until Spider-Man No Way Home. But it really just shows the range that Tom Holland has. He can give these dark, gritty, and just brutal performances. I want to see more like this from him, and I really like what the Russo Brothers did with Cherry. Um, not really sure why it's called Cherry, but the chapter of the movie where he's in the military is called Cherry, and I'm guessing that's what. Here we are. Anyways, you know what I mean. Breaking us in the top three. There's only three movies left on this list. We're going all the way back to January of this year. Palmer on Apple TV Plus starring Justin Timberlake. This just has heartfelt and this awesome feel-good movie written all over it that's exactly what it is it was a movie i tossed on to go to bed just fall asleep to and i ended up falling in love with justin timberlake's character on his path of redemption he was in jail for so many years and he's trying to do something that's right with a little neighbor kid who lives on his grandmother's property and him and his little kid form this bond he immediately becomes like the father figure to this kid and they really go on this little emotional adventure and it's this little friendship movie that made you smile made you laugh and you just had so much fun while watching palmer a very unlikable character in the beginning with justin timberlake really turns his life around throughout this movie and makes us all feel emotional you want to cry you laugh you have so much fun and that's exactly what palmer is it is the best Feel good movie I've seen this year, and it made the surprise list number three. I absolutely love Palmer. Breaking into number two, the runner up of the year. This is a little cheating, but Netflix did something awesome in July with three horror movies in a span of three weeks. It's the Fear Street trilogy. So I'm kind of grouping this as one, and that might be cheating, but I'm just going to include it this way. I absolutely love the Fear Street trilogy. It's arguably one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I love good slasher movie. In the month of July, I'm always in a slasher mood, and I want Netflix to take more risks like this. Three movies over a span of three weeks was so awesome. I didn't have to wait more years, and the first Fear Street kept me invested. Then Fear Street Part 2 was a prequel. It kept me even more invested. Then Fear Street Part 3, while it is my least favorite, I still really did enjoy it. Finding out the mythology of everything going on here. And a Fear Street trilogy is going to be three movies that I watch every Halloween, maybe every summer, absolutely love Fear Street Trilogy. It's so dang good. But coming in number one, John Cena, the man of the myth of legends we have in a year. This is one not a lot of people have seen, really went under the radar over on Hulu. It is Vacation Friends with Little Rel Howry and John Cena. Now this is very over the top, rambunctious comedy, and that's not really for lots of people. And a lot of times it's not for me, but somehow, some way, it worked to its advantage in this movie. You cannot stop laughing throughout John Cena's comedic timing. He has mastered it, and I cannot wait to see what he does next. And he's really had a year for himself. Vacation Friends was a movie I just tossed on one day because I saw it came out, and I laughed my butt off. It's the funniest movie of the year. Vacation Friends is on Hulu, and it's the biggest surprise for me in 2021. Let me know down below in the comments section what movie surprised you the most this year. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are still watching, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button for me. Lots more top 10 lists coming behind the end of the weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.